All right, man. Hey, we're back. Kaz Kazadi, um, assistant athletic director over at SMU. Um, did the intro the last couple of times, so I don't know if I want to go into it again. Just refer back to the old videos. Before we start, man, make sure you get that sanitizer. Get yourself up, you know. Give yourself three feet. What, three feet there, C-Rod? Six feet? All right, good. We're standing up. Hey, all right, listen up. Um, we've been talking about a lot of different aspects of training. I think the first day we went over like a little bit of a, a, a training session I had. Then the second day we went over an extended warm up and options to train. Um, if you have no weights and uh, other forms of resistance, which is like either a med ball, a heavy water bottle, or a rubber band or something like that. Um, I'm gonna pull back just a little bit because what we can't do when we're doing this is get into specific exercises when it, when it comes to regards with athletics, depending on what your sport is. I work with guys that play football. We have other uh, employees within our department that work with um, young athletes that play other sports. So it, if you're playing a sport, let's say uh, tennis, basketball, volleyball, soccer, track, whatever you're doing, you're on your two feet. So everything we do, we fall back and say, okay, while they're on their two feet, are we creating an athlete or helping uh, minimize the chance of extreme injury? So we train on our feet because that's where all games are played or the games that we coach play. If you got uh, swimmers, they still got to come off the block, if that makes sense, all right? Um, you know, in general, so uh, too, many, too many programs kind of focus on uh, accepting force and, and all that. Sometimes we focus on accepting and producing force and making sure that that helps prevent injury. Uh, tendons and ligaments, uh, bone structure, I mean, just developing all kinds of uh, uh, well-rounded approaches to what we're doing. Um, injury prevention or reduction is like uh, making sure that the body has been exposed to different controlled uh, types of force in a controlled environment. So what we're trying to do is make sure that our athletes and the worst things that could happen to them, that window is reduced a little bit, if that makes sense. So we don't do that by just picking like specific uh, uh, um, exercises or getting caught up in specific movements or whatever. Take a look at the holistic picture and we know how I feel about nutrition. It all starts there because there's a myth when it comes to training that you're made when it comes to the weight room and that's where you're all made at and that's where you're built up at. And that's not true. You're made when it comes to what you do after you train. Or have you eaten and then trained? Did you eat after you trained? And then all that other musculature and then the puffiness that you see from guys or when they start getting lean is a side effect of them taking care of themselves nutritionally. All right, so I'm a big, a big monk and a big proponent when it comes to that. All right, all right, so see why you need any of this? You good? You good? Yeah, let's just sand, sand it up, you know? He's within my range, he's within my six feet. So sanitize her up, man, take this stuff seriously. All right, let's go ahead and go into the video. And I'm going to pause a lot and just really discuss uh, um, the Olympic complex, especially for your young athletes, your high school athletes, your incoming freshmen, or your transfers, uh, and what it does as far as teaching goes. All right, special guest on the music today is uh, Eric B and Rakim. So Rakim, you know, special guest. All right, we're back at it now, and we're back at it with uh, the RDL. Feet hip width. Knees slightly bent, hips are gonna go back and high, knuckles are down, elbows are turned out, upper back is locked in, lower back is locked in, chin is neutral. So basically neutral means wherever your spine goes, the chin goes too, so you're not caught looking up. That's not neutral, this is neutral, all right? So we use this for a warm up on a day where we're gonna start with the lift first or a day where we're not gonna get outside. So this will be our warm up. Why again, we're on our feet. RDL is going to set us up for success. RDL is the beginning of the clean movement. You get a good, quick hip hinge, so you get to go ahead and see a little bit of lower back mobility and hamstring flexibility when you're coaching your young athletes through this. Our older guys should be really proficient at this. By the time they're seniors, if they've been with us for four or five years, they should be able to coach the entire row, no matter what sport they're in. All right, so I hit five and trying to get to the top of the knee, and as I get loose, I get to the bottom of the knee. Then I go straight into uh, high poles, elbows up, Knuckles down, you know, just kind of setting myself up to get into that block clean that we'll get uh, coached up on uh, 
pretty soon here. Knuckles down, trying to keep the bar close to the shirt. First rep, take your time warming up too. The warm up is the warm up. And I'm gonna say that again. If you see me mess up on a warm up, I don't care what you think, I'm warming up. So while I'm doing this and warming up, I'm trying to get loose. So I make my mistakes during the warm up and get ready to hit it when it counts, if that makes sense, right? Anytime you make a mistake, man, let that thing go, move on to the next play. We'll get into that tomorrow with the sports psychology. Mistakes, you know, swipe, swipe and move on. All right, bent over row, elbows go back. I need to get my shoulders down a little bit more to keep my chest parallel to the ground. But again, this is the first movement of the day, so it might be a little taunt, all right? Here we go, overhead press. Get your head through the window. Get the bar above your head. Great for shoulder mobility, right? You're not really doing that for any kind of strength work or whatever, you're just trying to get the shoulders uh, loosened up. And I'm gonna get a little uh, massage and a little rub. All right, here we go, set number two. RDL again, getting a little deeper on the movement. Hinging back a little bit, bringing the hips closer to the bar a little bit faster, going right back into the high pull. And you can change the order of this up to, to suit your professional preference or personal preference, All right? I, I changed the order up to fit me. So now we're in, now I'm really trying to get my hips popping and push forward, letting the uh, wrists get loose as I go. If you got a young lifter or, a, or somebody that hasn't lifted much, this is where I will start them. Get these movements in. Time under tension with the bar while they're holding it. Sit back and down on the squat. Hips go back, knees go out, whole foot's in the ground, chest is up. And on that front squat, I need to do a better job bringing my elbows up on my way up. But again, I'm warming up, so take it for what it is. All right, here we go. Good, overhead press, looks a little better. Again, warming up, getting loose. And I'll go through this three, three sets. I'm a big by three by five. And if I, if I feel like I, I've gotten acclimated to it, I'll go up and wait. So start out with a 10 pound, add a 10 and a five, and I'll start out with two 10s or I'll go to a 25. And you'll find out that that time that bars in your hand, what it does to your forearms and what it does to your, your grip strength and everything, it all improves. Time and attention. All right. Now trying to keep the bar close to your shirt, pull it back to you. Pull the bar back to you, don't let it get away from you. Use your hips to get the whole thing going. Push through your feet, extend your knees, hips, and then get the bar going. Good. Good sitting back. All right, this is the last set of the warm up. then we'll get into block cleans. Change the location on the block cleans. Uh, this is the end of the week workout, I think. So we might have went from a little bit higher up, let's say uh, mid thigh. I'll change the location. We'll pull from the ground. We'll pull from above the knee. We'll pull from a, 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 a mid thigh and high hip. So this is a mid thigh. So knuckles down. Got a couple of clean pulls in to set myself up on the first couple of sets. Now I'm pushing through the ground and got to get my hips popping a little quicker. First set, first rep, first set. Here we go. Got to get taller. Big pull. And then bar gets weightless, then after that is fast hands. And you can see if I'm doing a decent job by how much space is between my chest and the bar. Good. Bunch of reps, more reps, more coaching. So I did a bunch of reps so we could coach it up. Knuckles down, elbows out, big pull. Starts with the feet. Ankle, knee, hip, big shrug. Ankle, knee, hip, big shrug, fast hands. Ankle, knee, hip, big shrug, fast hands. Ankle, knee, hip, big shrug, fast hands. Good. I got a bunch of reps in on this day and then complemented with a little bit of light plyo work. Dude, that's not too bad for 65 years old, man. Good, now we're on set three. We're still kind of setting up. I'm still priming myself with the big pull. Big pull, over-exaggerate the pull, good. That's probably the best rep of the day. I might have just shot my whole bullet chamber, emptied the clip on that right there. Good, back into the second rep. Third rep coming up, good. Big pull, fast hands. I can move my hands a little bit faster, move my hips a little faster. I think I'm type cocky right now. I know I've hit all the sets, so I'm not really chasing it, if that makes sense, all right? Set four, same thing. This was the emphasis this day. 
Let's move it a little bit faster, Cos, man. You know, don't be so cocky. It's probably my producer, it's probably Chris, because he ain't hit a set, you know? Mr. Do His Own Demos, but that wasn't a great one, but it counts, yeah. Got hit on the chest. And uh, I'm gonna pause it right there. We're not gonna go over bench much. Coaching point on bench is just, man, let the elbows go against the rib cage and make sure that you're keeping your uh, wrist locked out. I see a lot of high school guys letting their wrist boss back and you would never, you know, defend yourself and throw a punch like this in the street. You might be talked about or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So just, a, just a, 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 another reminder, everything that we're doing is, is, is we sit in a room and we discuss it as an entire staff. And then we say, okay, how does this, how can we incorporate this into what we need to be doing for our athletes? We're not picking random exercises and our ambition is not bodybuilding. Our ambition is not quote unquote powerlifting, although power and strength play a major role into what we're doing. They play a major role. Hypertrophy or size plays a major role in what we're doing. It's, the, it's in the early stages. But when we're putting a template together, our objective is to help the head coach have as many healthy players as possible throughout, throughout camp. And then after that, taking a look at what we have after camp. And then it's like throughout the quarters of the season, if that makes sense. And sometimes that's by cutting some back or adding a little too, but never am I personally trying to be the, the, the strength coach of the year in the weight room. We know if we did a decent job, depending on how many guys he has left and depending on the type of injuries that the training room is seeing, if that makes sense. You know, if you're going to take a pat on the back uh, in the weight room for doing a good job in the weight room, sometimes you got to take a knock. If the training room is jam packed with specific type of injuries, whether they're uh, uh, labrums, pecs, low backs, occasionally hamstring, depending on the position and all that stuff. You know, all those things, again, there's a lot of uh, 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 variables to go into those, but you need to make sure that you're taking the, the bad with the good too. Don't just get patted on the back feeling like it's only going good when you're going good. Right? So I um, wish we could do a little bit of Q&A right now and uh, answer a few questions, but my producer, you know, when you think about that, when we went live, it was just going to be me, Eric B and Rock Cameron, and occasionally Jay-Z and Nod, you know? So I'm going to hit the tape and then uh, get through this. It's going to be nothing but a, a change the, uh, the, the choice to, instead of flat bench, the incline bench. Not a big fan. Was just trying to do something just for variety. Again, you got to be careful with variety. I was doing this because we're on lockdown. When you get in there and you're with the young athletes, if you're doing incline for variety, I think you're making a mistake. If there's a reason you're doing incline and it's a, a, a healthy reason, then go ahead with you. But if, if it's just for variety, you got to be careful. We're going to do the same thing over and over and over. We're going to do the same thing over and over. We're always going to do some type of a pull, some type of a clean, and we're always going to change the location. It's going to go from the ground, uh, uh, below the knee, above the knee, uh, high thigh, mid thigh, hip, whatever it is. But you're going to do that every single day. And you're going to squat. The minimum is twice a week. If you count the complex, you're going to squat every single day. Um, and then after that, you're going to pull. So some type of a vertical pull, some type of a horizontal row or whatever, but you're going to row every single day also. If you take a look at uh, uh, our templates and, and you want to see what we're doing a, a poor job at, I'm not a great bench press coach. I'm not a great bench press coach. And I'm okay with that. The ne next time you see a football player playing the game on his hands, I'll become a better bench press coach. You know, uh, I know I've, uh, I've ran into some young coaches you know, in all their wisdom, I think they had just graduated college and got their certification like six months after, you know, they're working with a little couple of knuckleheads and they asked me like, uh, are you a speed coach? I'm like, man, like, that's one of the dumbest things I've ever heard in my life. How can you say a guy's a speed coach when the game is about speed? I don't know, speed is the king. I mean, the game, if, if you're not a speed coach, then what, what other kind of coach are you? So. We hit like one or two reps here, and then after that, it's time to move on. Ain't no league Labradas on here, man. This ain't, you know, pumping iron with Schwarzenegger. It's a nice little stretch, nice little 
uh, variety with the incline. We'll get through this and then we'll get over the, uh, I think we got a bent over row. And then again, so we're finishing with the horizontal row. Got to get those shoulders down a little bit more, get that butt up a little bit more, lock in that lower back and then roll back. Good. So the pull today was bent over row because we're in the garage and uh, we got to make do with what you got. You know, there's no excuses. You still got to get it in. Lock in and roll. Okay, as we finish up here tomorrow, we're going to go over um, just our approach to sports psychology, our approach to thinking right, which, you know, a couple of uh, industry friends of mine have also quoted uh, from, the, from the whistle to the snap. So Dr. Pat Ivey, who, who did a great job with uh, Coach Rick McGuire, who was a longtime Olympic coach. I mean, I learned a lot of sports psych approach from those guys and then also discuss mindfulness and how sports psych is a component of that and uh, uh, what we went over last year with uh, our mindfulness coaches. All right. Appreciate you guys joining me. So we'll see you again tomorrow at two o'clock. And if you got any questions, man, feel free to hit us up.